This is a model that was first introduced because a Fender rep happened to see Jimi Hendrix playing a jazz master upside down. Welcome back Troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, today we're talking about the Fender Supersonic. Before we get too far into this, let's learn some about the vintage models. Well, maybe not true vintage, but the first Supersonic birthed in the late 90s under the Squire Vista series. They looked like this and they came in a few different colors. But what boggles my mind is these Squires sell between $800 to $1,800 used, as evidenced by completed reverb sales. I mean, people are asking as much as $2,500. Those things are crazy. <laughs> but then it was starting in 2012 that the Supersonic was rebirthed under the Fender branding in the Made in Mexico Pawn Shop series. That time they had Apple Red Flake, Gunmetal Flake, Sunfire Orange Flake. They were really cool metallic finishes. And then recently, just for 2021, under the Squire Paranormal series, they offered a blue sparkle and a shell pink one for a very attractive price point of $430. Those were the colors in the second series, here were the first series. So, due to that massive Squire release, relatively affordable, a lot of people were asking me to review that model. But then, I just happened to check out on Fender Japan that they were doing a limited edition run over there. In the first time being made in Japan, as far as I'm aware. Look at that. This is more like the drum shell material. That's a very, very big metal flake blue sparkle. So this is going to kind of be a little bit more of a lighter blue. I like the darker blue ones, but hey, sometimes those Squire ones that are a little bit cheaper will have a different appearance. So maybe check out a video for those. But it's a beautiful guitar nonetheless. But you're going to notice that there is a lot of differences between this and the Squire version. And that's why I wanted to do this one because, you know, you probably won't see any more videos about these things, let alone see all three colors that they're offering. So I want to go over just very briefly what is different between the paranormal version and this one. The first thing that I noticed is the pickups. Obviously, they're different pickups, but you no longer have the zebra bobbins, which I think is a mistake. But they were going off of the Vista series, and most of those looked like this. These guys get a tinted neck, which looks fantastic. Like, that's a really dark and ambered over. Wow. They also get the skunk stripe on the back of the neck. These have a true rosewood fretboard versus the Indian laurel. The body is made out of basswood on this one, whereas the other one is poplar. The neck profile is significantly different. This is a U shape, whereas the other ones are a C shape. So that just makes this like a complete night and day difference. You know, if you like the thicker necks, you probably want to go for this one. Besides just cosmetics. Some other small things is this one only has one string tree, whereas the other ones, they have two of them. And one more thing on the headstock is we get a 70s bullet style truss rod instead of just the regular plastic inset one that you just do with an Allen key. And in general, made in Japan guitars rank above the Mexican made counterparts. There's good and bad guitars out of every manufacturer. There's a lot of good Mexican made Fenders and Squires. There's a lot of great Japanese ones and made in USA. I'm not here to discuss that today, but you can't take note that this one actually says Fender, whereas the other one's Squire. So naturally, there's going to be a huge price difference, right? Instead of 430 bucks, you're going to pay 136,620 yen. And unfortunately, it does just come in a gig bag, but that's just how it is in Japan. Everything comes in a gig bag. But, you know, if you don't like to be so standout and flashy, you might like these other two colors I got for us. Our next one here being black. I almost didn't get this one because... In my opinion, the ebony finishes, they're, they're kind of boring in comparison to that. But oh yes, what makes this thing work is it plays off the double black pickups and you get the white pickguard that stands out. But most importantly, it looks like an aged guitar because this really is more of an amber hue rather than just like a light tint to it. But before I decide which one's my favorite, we better take a look at the last one, which I think this one actually has a contender to be my favorite. Same aged headstock. But, oh, that's interesting. So it's supposed to be, I think, Olympic white. And it's kind of like a slightly off white color. It has like a little bit of mint green into it. Like, these look good as a set. 
Like, they all have something that I like about them. I'm very interested to see which one you guys like better. I mean, these are like some vintage, very grungy colors, whereas this really stands out. It kind of depends what you're going for, but they're all pretty interesting. So now let's get like my first impressions on these things. Naturally, this is upside down as we were talking about earlier. So it's kind of like a left-handed guitar. Doesn't this look better? It's kind of like a duo sonic or something like that. You've got your headstock the right way this time, but your controls are here. So it's not meant to be a left-handed guitar. It's basically just a lefty with righty setup because you've got your toggle switch here. You've got your controls, which oddly enough are both volumes. You have no tone option on this guitar, but the feel and quality of these, every single one of them, the fretboards are fantastic. Like sometimes rosewood can be really dry, but this one's straight out of the box from the factory. It's got a little bit of a glossiness to it. Like it's not actually finished over. It's just how oily the wood is. But check out this neck plate. That's kind of interesting. It's recessed into the body just a hair. It's kind of a strange trapezoid shape. F stamp this time instead of S because it is a Fender product. There's kind of cool quirky guitars. I'm just happy I was able to get these things in, so there's a nice video documenting them on the internet. This is tempting because green screen fun. We can make this turn green, we can make it turn yellow, we can make it turn orange, we can do whatever color we want. Heck, we can even put Frankenstein on this, the Frankenstein sparkle. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and throw one of these on the workbench, take an individual look at its parts and specs. inside this cult classic guitar. The very first thing that I noticed is what the heck is going on with our neck? I'm guessing this must be a full-size Fender neck, but since this is a short scale model, they just stop it? But as far as our routes, it's routed for two humbuckers, just like you would expect. You've got your toggle switch route over here. You can see through to the basswood body right there, but pretty much everything else has been covered over in this blue sparkle paint. Which, before we move on, here you can just see how big sparkles these are. And the nice thing about this really thick gloss finish that they have over top of here is it's not going to finish check. So if you're worried about that and sparkle finishes, you don't have to in this case. So, let's take a look at our electronics here. These pickups, they're called the Dragster BB set. So you get the neck and bridge. And as far as the electronics, you have two 500k pots in here. And they're full-sized, hand-soldered, everything's looking good in here. Usually that's the one downfall to Made in Japan guitars. Like, the body build quality, the materials and everything, they're very similar to USA-made ones. But then they cheap out on most of them and put slightly lesser quality electronics in them. This one, it looks okay. But let's see what the dragster does for us. 7.87k ohms in the bridge. Neck position, 7.88. Then middle position, about 3.92. And yeah, that's right, you heard me correctly earlier. This is indeed a dual volume control. There is no tone, and it's, oh man, it's reversed. It's like a lefty. So your neck pickup is this control. Oh man, that's so confusing. I do not like that at all. <laughs> and your bridge pickup is this control. Well, I guess I understand it. If you wanted to do volume swells or kill your signal quickly, it makes sense. So if you think about it like that, yes, maybe that's why people like these things, but I did not know to even expect that. Crazy guitar. But now moving on from the basswood body to the maple neck, we have 22 frets on this with the white dot inlays. They're nothing too fancy or special here. We've got a nine and a half inch fretboard radius on these with a slightly shorter 24 inch scale length. So regular strats are 25 and a half. So you're missing about an inch and a half, which is conveniently covered up by right there. And also take a second to notice the pick guards actually custom routed for these humbuckers. So if you wanted to swap this out for covered humbuckers, you couldn't because you would have to do some additional routing because it actually hugs it. So you can't see inside. Straight up bone nut measures 1.66 and 2.04 by the 12th. And here's where our U neck profile shape will come in. First fret neck depth, 0.86. Okay, not too crazy. Let's see what it does at the 12th. 0.92, wow, that stays very consistent. Like by no means is this an overly chunky neck, but it definitely has a lot of material to the back of it. 
you know, it's not like a deep U or anything. It's very close to a C shape, but you can definitely feel it. Like you can kind of see what I'm talking about right here. How the neck just has a little bit more mass back here, I guess you could say. Not tons, just enough to be hardly noticeable. Moving on to our headstock, nice and aged fender supersonic on the front. You can see it's got some speed to the letters. The very cool bullet truss rod. Basically, you just put your Allen key in here. It's not that much different than normal. We've got it all strung back up. Let's take a look at the bridge. Basically, just like what you would find on a Stratocaster, basically. A vintage style six saddle one with six screws into the body. And this is what comes in the gig bag. You just get a little warranty pamphlet, some general information about fender, and you get a black tipped bar, as well as a truss rod adjustment tool in there. But I've gotta say, that looks fantastic on this guitar because the black tip matches the pickups and that. You know, I'm starting to dig the vibe of this guitar more and more that I look at it. But now moving on to the back, here's what we got. There is a comfort carve right here in case you didn't see it in the unboxing segment. Here we'll take a closer look at the bolt on neck. Very interesting how it's recessed into there. I wonder why Fender doesn't do that on more models. Does it just come down to tradition and they didn't have any tradition to uphold with this weird model? But hey, your strap button is actually part of the neck screws right there. They just kind of put it on right there. And then your other one is in the regular location on the bottom here. And here is the back without the white plate that's normally on it. Stock from the factory, you get three springs, kind of a basic block. The magnet does not stick to it. I know I keep going on and on about the really nicely dark tinted neck and maybe you don't even like this because it's a super gloss finish. I just think it looks better on this model than the white neck that the Squires get. But this is the 75th anniversary year of Fender. So all 2021 made guitars will have the Fender 75 and the record logo. And you get kind of Klusen style tuners. They're not branded. I'm not sure the manufacturer. But looking at the guitar this way, it kind of just looks like a regular Fender offset. As far as QC goes, I really didn't find anything to note except for just one screw was over tightened on the back. It was that top one right there. So besides that, and yeah, the frets could be a little bit more polished. I was very impressed with this, especially coming all the way from Japan. All said and done, this weighs seven pounds, 11.3 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. All right, let's go ahead and run through the tones of this guitar. Straight up, honest facts. This is the worst guitar I've ever demoed as far as tuning stability. I cannot keep it in tune even with the trem blocked off. I have no idea what's going on with these guitars. But I'm going to do the best to get you a demo that's as in tune as possible. <laughs> so we'll start with our neck pickup here.
pickups don't sound like anything special to me. Like, they're good, but they're not, like, terrific. <laughs> pickup has some nice juiciness to it but I mean nothing crazy and that bridge position sounds a bit anemic to me but I do appreciate the middle position Let's try some distortion. with the distorted tones. Like, I kind of view this as more of a grungy guitar, I would assume. <laughs> so it does do that whole power chord stuff very well. Once you get the tuning figured out, I think you'd actually be pretty darn happy with this thing. Like, this bridge pickup becomes very aggressive. <laughs> Ridiculously clear. I think that is the benefit of this. Clear, but angry. I'd imagine that'd cut through the mix okay. Neck pickup. Now that we know all about the Fender Supersonic limited edition Japan exclusive guitar, what are my final thoughts on this thing? A very nice guitar, super grungy vibes. It can do a whole bunch of different stuff. It's just a shame I couldn't keep any of these guitars in tune because I would have gladly demoed more of them, but I figured I would just do the one that I could, you know, set up and go. So I'm sure after a good professional setup on these guys, they would be okay. But, you know, just a forewarning, I had some tuning stability issues. And it wasn't even like the regular stuff. I lubricated the nut. Maybe it's just the strings aren't so good, but man, you can really see just how shiny this fretboard is here. So that's the biggest con to these guitars. 
But the biggest pro is, you know, it's, it's just kind of a goofy, weird guitar. You get a bunch of different finish options to express yourself. It looks like a lefty, but it's a righty. It was very comfortable, surprisingly. I mean, it's got the comfort cut back here. It just rests against your body. It's not overly heavy. The reverse headstock, it, it just seems natural on this guitar because your body is so weird. And despite normally having this big chunk up against you resting, it just, it, it just feels natural, even though it doesn't look natural. So ultimately, would I own one of these things? <sighs> It's probably not for me. I mean, I get the vibes. I like that they do have a higher end version out there that's branded Fender, but it just wasn't my favorite guitar in the world, but I did enjoy playing it. There were some very good usable tones, just not necessarily for me. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this Japan exclusive guitar. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglisguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.